Hi everyone, Peter Lisiaga here. I hope you guys are doing great today. Happy Friday. And I thought I'd come on here very quickly at this time and I'm getting ready for a very, very uh, <laughs> exciting week next week. Um, scheduled to start doing what I call uh, Life Mastery uh, Live um, here every day, Monday through Friday. So I'm working that out. But I also have a new ebook that I put out that I updated. It's something that was shared with me that uh, that I wanted to share with you guys. And so I'll put the link up in a bit. Uh, but uh, today I want to talk about uh, what I wrote in my notes this morning. I woke up this morning with this mindset. I've been, you know, I've read, <laughs> I've gotten so deep into Nir Eyal's books from uh, his book, the most recent book that he wrote, Indistractable. And I was in a uh, had, uh, interview with him last week with our mastermind group, which was amazing, exciting, been connecting with him and he's been encouraging me. And I took his book over the weekend, his first book called Hooked and read that, probably read that in about five hours. And I was just so, you know, involved in it. But today I wrote that in my notes this morning, waking up and uh, basically there's traction versus distraction. What are your intentions? And that's what I wrote into in my journal this morning. Traction versus distraction. What's your intention? What are your actions? And I want to talk a little bit about that today. And, and I put together, I just threw uh, uh, this together and uh, put a lot of thought into it. So when I mean by throw, throw together, did that in the last, uh, since four o'clock this morning, been working on it between meetings. But uh, um, I know growing up in the Bronx, let me just share this with you because I think it's pretty cool. Okay, this right over here. You guys see this? This is me. And this is a, a picture uh, uh, of the Bronx back in the 70s, which is where uh, the time that I uh, grew up, you know, I was a kid in the Bronx in the 70s. And this is me. The little picture here is be, uh, about maybe nine years old. And then a picture of me about 16 to 17 years old. Anyway, growing up in the Bronx, I remember... Uh, um, uh, my focus really was to survive. Really, it was just so. It was so. It was so violent in the Bronx, and this was my playground. I don't know if you can see this right over here. You see this kid right there playing on a car, and that was me. I would go into these buildings, and we would play tag in the buildings, and and it was very dangerous. I remember a couple of my friends had little accidents, and and one had to be run to, rushed to the hospital. But this was our playground. We played in this, and I think back to this, and I can't, I can't imagine, you know, as a kid playing in this. I, I think right now I must have been one dirty, smelly little kid. But did I care? No. All I wanted to do was live life and have fun. And so this was uh, my life back in this, uh, in the '60s and '70s. I grew, uh, I was born in '61. And this was 1970, this picture of me as a kid. I remember uh, at 12 years old, uh, I had a situation where I was running with a gang. My brother and I went out to uh, to rob someone. And I remember robbing this person and then running from the police. And then as I was running, I'm um, just saying to myself, this is not the life that I wanted to live. And I knew I wanted to get out. I didn't know how, but I knew I wanted to get out, get out of the streets and and my focus was just simply get out. And I, and there were so many things distracting me from that mission. It took me decades for me to get out. I finally got out of um, the Bronx, literally got out of the Bronx when I was at 16, 17 years. So I think I just um, turned 17 and got out of the Bronx, went to Florida. And that's when I tell everyone that the animal in me, the street animal was, uh, it took about two years for the animal to come out of me. And uh, I, you know, I started learning how to live and making better decisions, better choices, but uh, there was always distractions in my life. And I want to talk to you today about distractions. I want to talk to you about, you know, what one can do, because right now with this pandemic, I know not only my myself, my family, but our students at Donato Karate Center and our community, my focus right now is helping people, encouraging people to stay focused, to not get distracted, but to get what I call traction. Let your action lead to traction in the direction that you want to go. Uh, like me growing up in the Bronx, uh, I, I needed to make choices and have my actions that lead to uh, to me getting out of the Bronx. And so I want to talk a little bit about that today. So uh, basically traction 
versus distraction, what are your intentions? And I'm going to really springboard off of this. And I have to tell you that Nir Ayal, who wrote this book right over here, this book right here, and I read it, and uh, I've been really going to it every day and pulling out of it and getting ready for a couple of uh, workshops that I'll be doing in the future. But right below uh, on this slide here, get my free ebook. I just put it up today. Uh, I updated it. And it's uh, peterlisiaga.com forward slash indistractable. It's 100% free. And go there. It gives you some ideas, some tips, 12 of them in total that you can use parents for yourself and for your kids to really get on this path to being indistractable, not getting distracted as, as, as you strive to do what you intend to do. And so for me, it was living life. And I just wanted to live life. I want a life that was, you know, uh, right now I want a life that of meaning and purpose because I'm going to be 60 years old. So everything that I do in the course of my day, I want to do it with intention to live a life of meaning. And I know when I was a kid growing up in the Bronx, I just wanted to live. I wanted to survive because every day was just a question of, you know, where am I going to get my food? Uh, how am I going to uh, survive in that day? And it was just a you know, a life of survival. And uh, so I get this idea of um, really staying focused on what really truly matters most. And this is why <clears throat> I, I want to teach our, our kids this. And then of course, you, you know, you get visions, goals, dreams, and ambitions, which is what I had as a kid. And I wanted to live that life. So my intention was to live life to live life to its fullest, to, you know, to create a vision for myself, to set goals for that vision and to, to realize dreams, to make, turn these dreams into reality. And that was my ambition. And really, uh, a lot of choices that I was making was very destructive. And so, but my intention was to live my life, but I was getting very distracted. And this is what we're seeing our kids do, um, with our, even ourselves getting so distracted with everything that's going on. Uh, especially these days. And I, I say especially these days simply because we have access to more things that uh, pull our attention, that distract us, and that may lead to dis uh, destruction. Okay, so what are your intentions? Are your intentions for traction or distraction, which can lead to life or destruction, to your goals and dreams and ambitions, or to basically to annihilation, whether it's physical or mental or spiritual or psychological. So what are your intentions and actions? Do, do your actions lead you to life or destruction? <laughs> and, and it's that this is my mindset. I put this for, uh, together for this. And you know what I intend to do is to live life. I want my actions to go in that direction and not to go... Uh, and do the things I do not intend to do, which is uh, unless uh, we are being aware and focused and living life with a purpose and we know what our intentions are from the moment we get up in the morning and then have a plan of action to, uh, to do what we intend to do. If we don't focus on that and really discipline ourselves and set ourselves up for success in that direction, um, at any given moment of the day, uh, we may be going in the wrong direction. Okay, so uh, are you getting distracted from where you want to go? Are you uh, going uh, in the direction of life, which is traction? Are you get, do, making uh, choices that make uh, create action that give you traction in the direction of life? Or are you going uh, uh, making actions that are distracting you, that are, that are taking you away from where you want to go? that take you maybe to destruction, at least if you keep staying on that path. Now, uh, my thing is this, and this is one thing I learned from Nir Ayel reading his book and meeting with him, is that uh, 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 what your action, it's not a question about your actions, it's more of a question of what your intentions are. Uh, for example, if I wanna play video games all day long and that's my intention and that's my plan, and then my, so my action, if I do that as an action, that's what I intended to do. That's fine. That's great. So I'm not judging people's actions. What I'm doing is questioning people. And if I were to judge, I would judge people's intentions. If they're doing one thing, but their intention is to do another thing, 
then I'm going to challenge them on that. I say, you're doing this, but you say you want to do this. And so let's get realigned on it. Let's get lined up to create an action that gives you traction in the direction you want to go. And that's the big thing that I'm teaching these days to our students and really inspiring our community, our parents, our teachers, everyone to do. Look at your actions and what are your intentions and are your actions leading you in the direction of what you intend uh, to accomplish where you intend to go and and then it's giving you traction giving you direction in that uh, in that direction uh, in, uh, in that direction and so that's very very important now a couple of things that I learned um, from Nirael and studying you know his book and his work is that there's two kinds of triggers we can have internal triggers and external triggers that distract us and an external trigger could be let's say if you are um, uh, you're reading a book and all of a sudden you hear your phone beep. That's an external trigger. And as soon as you hear that beep, and you guys know what I'm talking about, as soon as you hear that beep, you get distracted. I'll be maybe momentarily, sometimes for hours. You hear that beep? Oh, what's that beep? It must be something important. It might be something important. However, what, if it distracts you from what you intended to do and accomplish, then it's a distraction. It's an external trigger. And one and another thing that I learned from Nir, Nir Ayel, uh, from his book Indistractable, and also meeting with him, speaking with him, and studying his work, is that you also have uh, have those internal triggers. And so an external trigger will will trigger an internal trigger, and so a, a need that might be met. Okay, maybe I'm doing something that I really don't want to do, and then this external trigger will trigger that, and then I'll find an excuse to get off track from what I intend to do. And so there's so much going on, and it's not anything new. We have external triggers happening. We have internal triggers happening. We have all these things that are disrupting our moments and our times and our actions so that we lose traction and go in the direction we want to go and get distracted, and we go in a direction we don't want to go which takes us away from you know what we want to accomplish what we intend to do what our intentions are and so one thing that i teach our students i remember uh, a couple of years ago i i went on this rampage <laughs> at dkc of course some of you guys know i'm a, I'm a master instructor at denado christ have been there for over 20 years and um if you're one of our students you know that there are moments where i have i go a bit on a rampage and me being on a rampage would be me picking something that I really want to focus on and my intention is to really drive that principle, that concept or that idea home. And I had a moment like that. And it was during one of our self-defense classes and it was a, one of the advanced classes and it was all the advanced students, black belts and I was showing self-defense techniques. And they were just going through the motions and I saw by their demeanor and by their facial expressions and by their by their body actions that they were just going through the motions and then I had to stop the class and we had and I, I went on this rampage and not just in that class but it was for a couple of weeks about intention when you come to class what is your intention when you practice a self-defense technique what is your intention and many of them were had these aha moments Oh my gosh, what are you talking about? So we had to talk about intention. I was a self-defense. Why do we learn self-defense? What's our intentions for learning self-defense? Well, to be safe in potentially dangerous situations. I says, right, that's it. And so what's your first line of defense? And so we went and reviewed our first line of defense, which happens to be awareness. You know, our three A's, awareness, assessment, and action. And so awareness. And uh, that became something we spoke about for weeks and just challenging every student that came in. Okay, what's your intention? Okay, are you being aware? And so right now, to, uh, to really defend and protect ourselves against external triggers and internal triggers, we must apply our self-awareness. We need to be self-aware of what's going on inside of us, and then we also need to be self, we need to be aware of what's going on outside of us. And then ask ourselves, once we become aware of a situation, right, awareness, we assess what we be, become aware of, and then we decide, we use the power of choice to decide what is the next appropriate action. Now, if uh, what we've become aware of okay uh says that well there's nothing to 
to uh, to be pay attention here, stay focused on what you're doing, then you continue to stay and keep traction going in the direction you want to go, doing what you intend to do. But if it's an emergency situation, you got to get up and you've got to move to the right appropriate action. And so I wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, this ebook that I put together, I updated it and tweak a couple of things in it. It's free. It's uh, just go to peterlessyaga.com forward slash indistractable. And it'll take you to that free ebook. I'd love to hear uh, your comments on it. If you could add, there's 12 things that I put up there that if you want to add to it, you can. 100% free. Go there. And the biggest question that I have for myself that I want to present to you is what are your intentions? Uh, are you getting traction or you are are you getting distracted? Are you moving the direction you intend to go, doing what you intend uh, to do Accom uh, so that you can accomplish what you intend to accomplish or are you getting distracted? And so being indistractable is having the ability to stay focused and pay attention and, and create action that gives you traction and the direction that you intend to go. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And again, go to peterlisiaga.com forward slash indistractable ebook that I make available free for you guys. Other than that, if you need to get a hold of me, if you are interested in any more short arts classes, if you live in Mount Moral or virtual, we have the in-person and virtual classes happening, reach out to me. You can private message me or just comment if you want to find out what our schedule is and all that. Just reach out to me, okay? Other than that, you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.